Let's talk about the subtle beast of emotional incest in today's video. But first off, let's look at what being subtle is all about. So I did a simple duck, duck, go search of the word subtle. It says so delicate or precise, something that's difficult to analyze or describe. Well, that does fit the definition of emotional incest, right? We'll talk about that more in a second. Or something that's delicately complex and difficult to understand. And lastly, it says making use of clever or indirect methods to achieve something. So all these fit what emotional incest, the foundation of emotional incest is all about. It's a subtle beast. It sneaks up on you because you're not aware that it's happening and it will pound you down. So subtle in terms of it's covert, it's hidden. Nobody really knows what's going on or what's happening, even the victim, namely because it's being done under the guise of love. It's a conditional love where the parent is using the child for their own emotional needs. So what it looks like to everybody else is this child is so well treated, so loved, and the child is feeling like they're on this pedestal and kind of a king of the world on some level. So in this sense, you're being gaslit. It's a mind F, you fill in the blank. It's a mind F in terms of things are being twisted for you as you're growing up. You're not even aware it's happening. That's pretty subtle, right? Something sneaking up on you and you don't even know that it's there. Subtle in terms of you, you think you're special and understandably so. You're the prince or princess to your mother or father getting special treatment. And you don't know it because it's subtle, but the world will soon let you know that you're not so special at all. And you'll find this out for sure when you go out into the real world. Definitely in the dating world, more about that in a second. But even with your job, for example, the boss is direct with you and telling you the way things need to be. And he or she is criticizing you from time to time and you need to hear it, but you don't know how to take it because you weren't criticized growing up. There couldn't be conflict in your home that was really worked through and processed and you could share your feelings about it. So you take criticism as something negative, as a personal attack. And this is because, again, it wasn't allowed in the household. Part of being a victim of emotional incest, the subtle beast, means everything's glossed over. No real feelings are dealt with. The parents aren't even dealing with their own marriage in the first place, how bad it is usually, that one of the parents is so empty and lost and feeling hopeless that they even would emotionally take over a child in the first place, right? So they're not dealing with feelings. That's part of what this bad marriage is all about. They're not talking about it, working through it. And of course, the child is being raised in this way. The parent doesn't really want to hear what the child's really going through. They don't want to know what's deep inside that child's heart. They simply want them to behave for them what the way that they would like them to behave for them. That doesn't include any real feelings, right? That doesn't include much of anything real. It's very subtle. You be what I want you to be. This is conditional love here. The child picks that up in verbal and nonverbal cues. They get the message. My own mother or father doesn't want to see the real me, but I seem to get kudos and lots of love, so to speak, when I put on an act for them, when I wear a mask for them, when I behave how they want me to be. You'll also likely find out that you were raised under the subtle beast, quick, fast, and in a hurry, when you start dating at some point in your life, assuming you even want to date. Because sometimes being raised in this very conditional, artificial love makes people so afraid of relationships and they're supposed to always be there for their mommy or daddy. So then they kind of put off dating. They're not even sure why. And it could be because they feel like I'm owned by my mother or my father, the one who took me over. I'm supposed to always be there for them. But assuming one steps out of that to the point that they're able to go and date, hopefully they can go do that, then they may find out how being raised in this toxic manner by their emotionally abusive parents, with the parents being focused only on their own needs, not the child's best interest, that I don't know how to deal with intimacy. Why is that? I'm so afraid of being vulnerable in a relationship. Why is that? I take everything so personally. Why is that? I have a hard time trusting. Why is that? I'm such a people pleaser and I turn into a chameleon with my boyfriend or girlfriend. Why is that? Even with my friends. It's hard for me to keep friends that really seem to care about me and vice versa because I'm always hiding who I really am. I'm in people pleaser mode all the time. Why is that? I don't seem to know myself, my feelings, my interests, what I'm all about. Why is that? Other people don't even seem to know what's going on when I try to explain it to them. They don't seem to believe me. They say things like, oh, you're fine. Your mother and father loved you. That's why they raised you the way they did. 
And then you try to say, no, it didn't include a space for me. There wasn't room for me. And people may say, oh, you're just spoiled. Please, anybody would give anything to be raised the way that you were. Treated like gold the way you were. And so you try to explain it and maybe you're gaslit and they're saying, no, no, you, you have it all wrong. They're telling you that you shouldn't trust your own feelings now. And then you're not even sure, is it true? Did this really happen to me? Which of course impacts all our relationships, all our friendships. And depending on how deep it goes, one can even begin to doubt their sexual orientation. A boy, for example, let's say, may have been so smothered by his emotionally dominant mother that now he's afraid of all women based on this. But how's he going to know this? Because he's dealing at this point with the subtle beast of emotional incest. It's gotten in there so deeply that now all women represent his mother. Somebody who's going to come in there and rob him of his identity and take him over. Well, that's a heck of a way to grow up, right? That sounds very frightening to have to deal with that. So in many, many ways, it can sneak into our relationships and how we deal with our significant other. A victim of emotional incest because it's so subtle. Unlike, let's say, a child who's beaten and they know what's been going on or sexually abused and they know what's going on. As horrible as those things are, with emotional incest, it's a lot more hidden and very gray area-ish. It doesn't appear like abuse, but indeed it is abuse. And then sometimes kids now in their 30s, 40s, 50s and on still think it's their responsibility to take care of that parent who emotionally smothered them. It's my responsibility. That's how they train me. And now that's robbed me of my life, but I'm not clear about it because it's subtle. That's why we have to bring it out of being subtle into the light of day and talk about it, for example, in videos like this. We need to explore how damaging it really is. So I hope this video is helpful to some of you who have been emotionally smothered by a parent and you're not quite sure what's going on. Maybe you're dealing with the subtle beast of emotional incest. If you are, feel free to comment about it in the comment section below. Maybe others can learn from your experience. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.